has almost 7 lakh followers on LinkedIn and has been recognized as the LinkedIn's top voice in India in both 2018 and 2019. He is also featured in the list of LinkedIn Power Profiles for being the most viewed profile in the financial sector on LinkedIn in India for four consecutive years. Antoine Lewis is the Programming Director of Literature Live. He has been the editor of several publications and websites including Burp.com, India's largest food review site, Savvy Cookbook, India's largest selling food magazine, the Khalij Times Cookbook, and food and drink editor at Paprika Media. I would like you to give a big round of applause for each one of them. Antoine Lewis, kindly take over. Thank you. One of the most interesting bits in Ambi's book is about grooming. And I want to start off with telling all the men in this room, please trim your nose hairs before going on Zoom. Okay? You're getting all the angles wrong, and people are saying things that they really shouldn't. Now, this may sound really ridiculous and, and silly, but personal grooming is actually one of the key things when you're developing a brand because as an individual, you are representing yourself, and how well groomed and how well presented you are is a reflection of who you are. Whether you are a personal brand as an individual, like say someone like Ashwin, or whether you are a personal brand within a corporate structure, like Tapan and uh, Ambi, both of these things, branding matters. And at the personal level, Unlike for the corporate level where you have big brand Bibles telling you where the brand should be, how you should present yourself, who you should associate yourself with, at the personal level you don't have these guidelines. Which is what a lot of the things that Ambi talks about and why it becomes important for you as an individual to understand how you need to portray yourself what you need to say, when you need to say it, where you need to, to say it. Now, all of these gentlemen are in branding. You've probably thought to yourself, what is this guy from food doing on a branding show? So they have taken up branding. I have chosen not to be a brand. And I'm hoping within this 45 minutes that they will convince me and you guys on why you should become a personal brand and how you go about doing it. So I'm going to start off with all three of you, but with, with Ambi, to tell me in three or four words, what is your personal brand and why you have chosen these three, four words. And Ambi, if you can just tell us why just three or four words are more than enough to sum up a personal brand. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Antoine, for the question and thank you uh, Pune International Lit Live for inviting Pune International Literary Festival. That's why I keep saying Lit Live uh, for inviting me here. Uh, if I were to describe myself as say three or four words, I would probably say analytical, insightful, and thinking and learning. Uh, you know that would be my uh, thing. Uh, I think it's important for us to, each of us to try and describe ourselves in three or four words because that kind of gives you the, the pole star on what you want to be, what you want to strive for. And the important thing is also to make sure that it is not us. Your personal brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. right? I think Steve Jobs said that. Uh, so I may say I'm very analytical, you know, I'm very perceptive, I'm very creative, I'm very very humorous. You know, I make people laugh. Hello? Are people around you saying that? You know, that's the asset. That's where the rubber meets the road. So I may think I'm brilliant, but if people around me say that this guy is very boring, I'm sorry, you know, but uh, you know, Satrujit is here, so uh, Satrujit is just smiling. But, you know, uh, Satrujit probably disagrees with me on, on the stuff I said about analytical and all that, but 
short answer, three, four words is your poll star. That's it. Tapan? <coughs> Hello. Yeah. <coughs> so when you ask me this question, it makes me think. So I don't think I went about um, thinking about personal brand and trying to put myself in three, four words. I have been what I am. I write what I feel like, and I present myself the way naturally I should be. Now it can fit into any category, uh, but if I ask about my obsessions, which is there, I can talk about that, and the branding, as he rightly mentioned, is up to the people to perceive. So my obsession would be to make a difference in society. That's one. Second is that I should be f accessible to anybody. I have 14 core customers. Anyone wants to reach out to me, they should be able to reach out to me and my people. They should be there. And the third thing would be that I should be what I am. I should not put up a facade of any kind. I think those are three things that no, I, I would think and work about. But I really don't try to put myself in any kind of straight jacket bucket of what I want people to perceive about me. <coughs> Ashwin? Um, well, first of all, I don't even really know whether I am a brand, but uh, uh, for me, my writing was in some ways um, a reflection of a deeper thought, which was that a lot of the things that we consider to be fact, very often those could be fiction. And very often things that we consider to be fiction could also hold an element of fact. And so the thought that arose, which resulted in my very first book, was that myth plus history is equal to mystery. And pretty much if I had to sum myself up, that's what drives me. And I think that's the reason why people pick up an Ashwin Sanghi book. So uh, I'm very, very curious about where there is an overlap between what we would commonly consider as myth and what we would commonly consider as mystery. And when we start digging into those overlaps, they produce a mystery. Okay. Um, sorry. I, I want to come in because you, you raised this thing about three words, et cetera. It, it's from my book. And for those of peop people, uh, Kevin Keller, you know, I keep mixing theory and, you know, stuff. So let me add this, I give back to you. I, I don't know. So Kevin Keller has this thing about what's called brand mantras. And every big brand has to describe itself in three words. So what is the brand mantra of Disney? Fun, family, entertainment. What is brand mantra of Nike? Authentic, athletic, performing. What is the brand mantra of McDonald's? Probably fun, family, food. Right? So th that's, where this, that's where this three word mantra, uh, mantra comes from. Uh, back to you, Ankur. Uh, thanks, Nambi. Um, Ashwin, just coming back to you, um, since we are at a literary festival and a book uh, festival, yeah. uh, you know, in, in the previous generation of authors, if you take a, a Wilbur Smith or Frederick Forsyth or, you know, any any of the, the uh, other generation, you, you line them up in front of us, none of us would be able to really pick up uh, who they were. But in today's generation, as... Uh, an author as a writer, it is almost impossible to be invisible. If you are invisible, your books are not going to sell on scale. If you're a small writer, that, that, that's fine, and I'm, you're looking for that. Do you not think in that context then that big being a personal brand influences the sales of your book and how well you succeed as an author? Well, to start with, obviously, I think, you know, it's it's very difficult, uh, Antoine, as we were discussing in, in the green room back there, it's difficult to say that uh, is it the brand that makes the story work or is it the story that makes the brand work? Uh, I would say probably the starting point is a great story uh, because without that, it's very difficult to get to the next stage, which is to create a brand around yourself. Uh, but when I had written my very first novel, The Rose of Our Line, um, uh, I had to self-publish it. Uh, and in fact, it was self-published under a pseudonym. So I wasn't even thinking about creating my brand. 
uh, because I was actually giving up my identity of sorts. Uh, it's only a year later when it was published in India and my publisher turned around and said, listen, we need to lose the pseudonym because we need to have you out there promoting the book. And uh, the Rosapal line went on to become a moderate bestseller. It was critically acclaimed, but not uh, something to write home about in terms of the numbers. Uh, and that prompted me to start making the rounds of the bookstores. And um, uh, one of the very first stores that I walked into, I can see Harshal sitting somewhere. Yeah. So one of the very first stores that I walked into was the Kemp's Corner bookstore of Crossword. And uh, along with uh, me was a salesman from my publisher. And I couldn't find my novel anywhere on the front shelf. So I asked the guy, uh, the, the store clerk, I said, you know, do you have any books by Ashwin Sanghi? I'm told that he's a very, very brilliant and prolific writer. So uh, he looked up his computer and he, he said, yes, we have three books. And so I went to the back of the store, which is where the books were located, picked them up, ran my kerchief over them because they had a thick layer of dust and brought them and put them right in the front uh, where people could see it. And the reason why I did that was because this particular salesperson at Westland said something very important to me. He said, sir, jo dikhta hai, wo bikhta hai. And never forget that. So it's you may spend two years or three years crafting a novel, but if you're not visible, you're not going to be sold. And I've realized over the last 15 years journey that visibility and availability are the two cornerstones when it comes down to retail. Now, what is it that a new author is supposed to do? Because it's not as if retail or distribution is instantly going to pick up several copies of his book. Ashwin, I don't want to get into that part of into marketing. No, but, but the I brand is what <coughs> leads to discoverability, Antoine. That's the that's point what, I'm yeah, trying to make. Yeah, great. That, that it is ultimately, if you long term hmm. want discoverability, whether it's in distribution, whether it's in marketing, you need to have some sort of a brand. Uh, what I am looking for, the best that I can hope for, is that when someone walks into a store and they see an Ashwin Sanghi book, at least they are willing to give it a shot because they have experienced Ashwin Sanghi in the past. And that is good enough reason for them to be able to pick up the book without necessarily flipping into the back cover. Hmm. Fabulous, Ashwin. Um, Ambi, it, it, there, there's a sense that you know uh, someone as an individual needs to promote themselves as a brand, and th that is understandable. Within a corporate structure, should individuals develop personal brands or not? What are the dangers, and how does one do it in a way that is not in conflict with the company that you're working with? Uh, I don't. I think. A lot of companies earlier used to be very wary of their managers projecting themselves outside. You know, you had to get corporate approval for writing a column in a newspaper, etc. But that has all changed now, because companies are clear that while the company brand is being built, there is it's good if the senior executives build their own brand, because building their own brand they can attract better talent even within the company, better talent will work with you, etc. So I think today, companies, I think, are quite OK, including several companies which say that, look, you have to go and give a lecture at, at a lit fest, or you go to go, go to some campus, Ahmedabad or Calcutta, or whatever, to give a talk. Go ahead. We'll pick up the tab. Right? We'll pay for it. This change has happened in the last 10 years. Fortunately for me, you know, in FCB Ulka, I had a very, very wonderful boss, Anil Kapoor. Satrajit has interviewed him when he was in AFAC. Uh, so he used to encourage this. He says, yeah, you get a call, go. Company will pay for it. Go, go, go. Because at that time he said, look, you have to build your, because he was very publicity shy. He used to hate journalists. Except so just to interrupt like you there, Ambi, you're saying this is 10 years ago. This yeah. is not a new phenomenon. It's not new. You know, those days we had to work much harder. Today, you know, he's got LinkedIn and he can post it and a million people can see it. But those days you had to write an article, you know, get, you know, Satrijit was there in Brand Equity to publish it or you know, Business Line to publish it. So he used to do that. But the problem is 
where do you draw the line? Where is your personal brand and where is your corporate brand? So as long as I was in FCB Ulka, as the CEO, EB or whatever, whatever I wrote was always positive about my agency, my agency's parent company, which I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, but you know, I had to say good things about IPG, <laughs> and I had to say good things about FCB, and I had to say good things about all my clients, because you don't say anything negative about And also kind of be guarded if you want to write something negative about a client whom you'll be chasing. You know, a few years time you want to get that client, don't say negative. So you have to be very careful what you write because you know, company is paying a salary. You can't go and say that, you know, uh, smoking is bad for you. So ITC is a key client, so I won't say that. I may believe that, but I won't say that. Today, I may say that. Today I'm free. I can write technically whatever I want. So if you're working in a company, you're building your personal brand, I think it's important that you follow what is the known as the social media policy of that company. If you don't know what it is, please go and ask the HR team. You know, any every big company should have a social media policy which will tell you what to write about, what not to write about. After that, I think, you know, as long as you don't cross the Lakshman Rekha, go ahead, build your brand. Because you build your brand, you attract better people to your company, your company image gets built up, you know, that this company probably has benefited tremendously you know, with Tapan's, you know, personal brand. So today companies are okay with that. Good old days, I think, a lot of CEOs are very, 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 <laughs> uh, very, very kind of worried if uh, someone below them, you know, started writing articles in Economic Times or, or Business Standard or whatever, right? Like, so I think he's smiling. Uh, they used to feel very insecure, you know, mujhe nahi bula yaar, tere se kaisa gaya. But, but it was a very perceptive managers, you know, CEOs is, no, no, go ahead and write, you know, go ahead, go ahead, build your own brand. Because it will help the company. It will project the image of the company and of course it will attract better talent to the company. So if you're working in a company and if you're doing something on building a personal brand, just be careful. You don't say anything negative about your company. Be positive. You don't need to say rara all the time. Uh, but at least be neutral to, neg to, to positive. Be positive about your customers. Don't say negative things about your customers. And go ahead and build your own unique brand. You can build a unique brand by being humorous, by being, you know, uh, by, by being very perceptive, by writing ins incisive articles, you can do all that. I think there is a line. You cannot cross the line. Tapan, would you agree with what uh, Ambi is saying? I mean, are you, do you encourage juniors within a Bajaj Alliance to like develop personal brands? What's your take on this? So let me give you a story about um, 10 years back, as Ambi mentioned. So when I started on social media, uh, one of my senior colleagues mentioned to me, uh, you spend too much time on social media. So I told him, <laughs> you spend too little. <laughs> <laughs> Today when I look at all those who criticized me for being on social media, I actually have an agency to help them build their brand. No. Uh, each, so I, I, I really don't go back and tell and remind people of old conversations. I'm aware that they have to be aware of what it. The issue is that when times change, you have to change with that. There's no more about personal brand, no more about corporate brand. No. People would not read an article on social media posted by the company. If they read also, the readership is very small. When individual posts, then the readership is very high. Today, people who are good in social media have more readership than Economic Times has when an article gets published. So we have to see the tectonic shift which has happened. So no more personal branding. It's about, no, you have to be there. And a company trying to do a branding on social media does not give no, that kind of uh, mileage as they do. So we look at our company. I think most of my senior executives would have very strong presence no, on social media, which we encourage. How do you control that message? How does Bajaj <coughs> control what it is? So this, this to me is one of the biggest uh, myths or arrogance that you have to think that you can control social media. The only issue is if somebody is not aligned to the corporate philosophy, that person may not work with you. But you can't control somebody to be aligned to what you want to do at a personal level. I, th I think it's, 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 it's not done. Individual freedom has to be respected. And everybody would be different. It is not necessary that you be aligned with what it is, but if you're in an organization, and if you are not aligned to the organization, you can be part of some other organization. Today, India offers that opportunity to individuals. 
but trying to curb freedom, trying to curb or put them into straight jacketing does not work. I think the era, and if you look at today, you know, anything which, is, which we say, do, it's already all over the place. Like you have enough digital records of you, whether you like it or not. You know, if anybody wants to find out something, your photo, videos, in the street you came through, all of you, wherever you came from, if you want, I can sit with the police headquarters, figure out every place has that video camera. No? I can exactly track you from where you have been coming. You may think about, no, you being completely invisible. It's not so. You're very, very visible. Whatever you say, whatever you do, is all recorded. You have digital footprints all across. Anybody wants to find out about you, can do so. So in, in an era like this, how do you want to straitjacket people or force them to a thinking? Never do so. Is the alignment with organizations? If they don't, if they're not aligned, they can you know, be with somebody else. It's perfectly fine. But never, never try. So we never try to force anybody to do have anything. That it's it's interesting. I mean, both of you all have talked about straight jacketing, and that's something that even I have been thinking about when it comes to uh, personal branding. Once you take up these three words or whatever, once you identify yourself as something, do you get straight jacketed into that? Do you have any freedom to express different uh, opinions? I mean, is it possible for Ashwin uh, Sanghi to write chiclet? One day, what what happens to his personal brand then? Is is there a danger with that, Ashwin? Of course, there is. Um, you know, uh, after I had written my first two or three novels, Antoine, uh, it was taken for granted that I'm uh, a writer of historical and mythological fiction, and I started out by saying myth plus history is equal to mystery. Um, but to a very great extent, what happened was that uh, it prevented me from moving further and trying out newer genres. So uh, I had to make a very, very conscious effort. Uh, when James Patterson came along, those, uh, those novels did not involve mythology or history. Those were out and out crime thrillers. Uh, but I knew for a fact that by doing that, I would be breaking out of the mold and I could establish myself also as a crime thriller. And luckily for me, both of those novels became New York Times bestsellers, so I established myself in that, in that sense. Um, and then after that, suddenly, uh, one fine day, my publisher turned around and said, listen, you keep talking about this, how lucky you are and how luck played a role in your life. So you should write a book about luck. And I ended up writing a small little novel uh, called 13 Steps to Bloody Good Luck. Uh, and then, of course, uh, that became into another series. Uh, so I think today now I have reached that point where I think uh, people say that, hey, listen, uh, probably uh, Ashwin cannot be boxed. Physically, in any case, it's very difficult to box me. But the point I'm making is that... With a big box, we can. Yeah, big uh -huh. box. Very big box. But Jumbo but box. But, but I think, uh, you know, someone like, for example, Shatruji is sitting right in front. I mean, he knows how difficult it is that once you have attained a modicum of success in a certain space, then the, the world expects you to keep doing more of that. So you also have to consciously allow your brand to be evolving. Uh, with that. So, for example, uh, I end up not only writing my books, but I also do uh, columns uh, where sometimes I'm taking a very different take. Um, I do a lot of discussions, a lot of events. I do a lot of speeches. Uh, very often when there are uh, speeches and events, I try and take positions uh, which are rather alien to me because it involves that much more research and it develops my research bank. So I think if you decide that you want to be straight jacketed, you will be straight jacketed. It's as simple as that. I think your brand has the capacity to evolve. Yes, Ambit? No, great. I think uh, Ashwin has given a great uh, journey, his own journey. I mean, where did my journey start? I started writing so-called case study books were used in my own class to teach advertising, right? This was the year 2000 when the first book came out. And then second, third, fourth, fifth came out. All of them are aimed at the academic crowd, the MBA, BBA crowd, right? Uh, simple, easy to read case studies, not those complicated long ones like Harvard, four or five pages, you'd know how Santur was built or Sundrop was built or Godrich Storwell or Neralife. Simple four or five page case studies, nicely illustrated. 
In fact, one professor in the US, in fact, was consulted by my friend, said, who will publish a book like this? It's a, it looks like a promotion piece for the agency. But yeah, Tata McGraw will publish it. They published five of my books. And then came a stage, I said, look, that is one genre. Let me try something else. And then I was lucky that my agent at that time, Anish Chandi, gave me an idea. And then I wrote, converted my PhD thesis into a very easily approachable book on religion and marketing. And uh, Vishwakarma Publishing came out with a Marathi version. Then I wrote something on advertising. Yeah, you have Nawab new noodles. And I said, okay, I'll try something else. I wrote about what you can learn from customer. The latest one, which is this one, so I'm showing it with your permission, which is uh, all the world's a stage, personal branding story. So I, when I started writing it, I could have easily written it as personal branding, step one, step two, step three. I said, no, I want to write it completely different. Right? And I talked to my agents, yeah, I'm going to write it like as if five old friends meet on their silver reunion in their campus. And they get into an argument on what is branding and what is personal branding, and it's all nonsense. Right? One very successful businessman says, it's all nonsense. Yeah, I built my company, 800 crew company, I've done IPO. You know, I've not done any personal branding. It's all crap. But that's how it starts. That's how the argument starts. And five people then, over two hours, talk about it. And that is presented as a story here. So it's, it's a very different approach. I've never written anything close to this in my previous books. They were all about brands and consumers or meeting clients and what you can learn from clients. Slightly more, shall we say, erudite. So I tried something different. I mean, whether it will work or not. I mean, jury still out. Reviews are good. I mean, including several of my friends telling me that, you know, this looks interesting. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had read this book when I was, you know, 25, 30 years, you know, uh, age. But it seems to be working. But it's a new approach. So I feel... Ashwin said is right, it's up to you. You can get boxed in it. But the fun is going outside the box and trying new things. You will fail. Something will flop. You will get panned. You will get cursed. That's okay. That's par for course. Right? But you need to try new things. A little I bit mean, like I'll a food writer being on a brand panel. Yeah, huh? <laughs> a little bit like a food writer being on a brand panel. Exactly. <laughs> food. I mean, a very famous food guy on a brand, a brand panel. Like, you know, when, uh, when I started my career in advertising, I looked very young. So advertising, get to meet senior people. So I looked at my boss, he had a beard. So I said, yeah, I should also have a beard. So I had a nice, nice fuzzy beard. Those days, beard was not cool. You know, very few people in corporate India had beard, except for people in advertising. You know, so I left advertising. I went and joined a British multinational called Boots Company. They make colder and Skeptical's burn all, uh, Bruf and Daiji and all of you are aware of. So I had, a, I had this very scruffy beard. And uh, I think the third day in office, uh, my MD, uh, B.M. Panapa, you know, used to look like a colonel, uh, met me in the loo and he said, Mr. Parameshwari, beard is okay for advertising. We, we are now in a British pharmaceutical company. And he washed his hand and left. The next day the beard came off. He said, <laughs> after that I'm not going to beard. So even in your physical appearance, you may need to make some occasional changes to suit you know which direction you're going in. So making changes is part of personal branding, is, is what I'm saying. So that the brand, as with the corporate brand actually, the personal brand evolves over time and has to adjust uh, to, to new realities. Which kind of brings me to technology and the relationship between technology and, and personal branding. Now I am personally of the opinion that uh, technology has actually had let me finish before you start shaking your head on me. Uh, <laughs> I was just nodding and saying yes to what <laughs> you were saying. Yaar. Okay, so no, so my idea is, is that actually with, I think with mobile technology, that the whole branding scene has really exploded. That, you know, with actually with the selfie, with the, the camera, the, the mobile phone camera, that has made a dramatic change, this kind of, self-reflection in a sense, you know, being the subject, being in control of you being the subject as opposed to a cameraman, and, and which were rare opportunities. I think personal branding has therefore become, is an extension of modern technology and it would never have taken, occupied this space if it were not for that. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, uh, all of us tend to think personal branding 
was something which was thought of after you know selfie and LinkedIn and smartphones with cameras came. It's not true. The first article on 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 uh, personal branding was written by you know Tom Peters uh, as a cover story in in the in the Fast Company magazine. It said brand called you, right? So it's 25 years ago, huh? not yesterday. 25 years ago. So personal branding is not a new concept, you know, propagated by LinkedIn and, and Instagram. It's been there. Those days, the way you built personal brand was different. You used different tools and techniques. Like in my book, I have one whole chapter I've dedicated to, I believe, the most masterful personal brand builder this country or the world has ever seen, which is who? Mahatma Gandhi. I know some of you may throw something at me, but you know, read the chapter, right? He changed the way he looked, so he changed the dress. And he's written it in his autobiography that I wanted to identify myself with a farmer. Therefore, I decided to go and he threw away all his Western clothes, just like I shaved my beard in a, in a different era, threw away all his Western clothes and started wearing a dhoti. Right? And then he started writing in very simple English, very simple Gujarati. He created his own media, which was you know Indian nation like newspaper he created, and he wrote in that. And he said, I want to have music. He started using music. You know, so he was a master personal brand builder. Right? So if you think personal brand building is new, it is not. I mean, it's always been there. Uh, and I think Mahatma Gandhi was masterful uh, at building his brand. And you know, his core was what? You asked for three, three words, right? His core was the truth. Mahatma Gandhi stood for, I can whistle for Mahatma Gandhi, I think. I know you all have that, you know. Munna Bhai made Mahatma Gandhi cool, but you know, but but still, right? So he used music. He used the way he looked. He used writing, communication, uh, and then you know how he talked. Uh, the whole concept of calling it Sabarmati Ashram. Right? I mean, it's it's Sabarmati home for him. He called it Ashram. Right? He brought religion in. Great master. I mean, uh, wonderful. Uh, I mean, look at it. I mean, no one has built a brand better than him, I suppose. So, I mean, he's a personal brand, right? But the myth is personal branding can be done only with selfies, can only be done with this. No, you can build a personal brand even without all that. This day and age, maybe you need to be on, on certain so social media platforms. That's my view. Ashur, would you like to defend my position? Um. Frankly, from a pers uh, perspective of individual brands, not corporate, I think it has become far easier. In fact, it has become far easier and it has become far more difficult. I'll, I'll explain both sides of it. Uh, easier in the sense that uh, to build a brand during the time of Gandhi required you to make a Herculean effort in terms of your reach. Uh, Whereas today, uh, you can actually, we are living in a world where there can be a lot of people who become famous for being famous. So, uh, which, which means in other words, they are actually animals of social media. And if you were to try and find out what is it that they actually do, they don't, they don't do anything besides social media. So in the sense that they have these humongous followings which are products of their personal brand on social media. So that is one change that has happened. But the problem with that, Antoine, is that we also now have everyone saying, listen to me, listen to me. The cacophony of voices is so loud. The long tail is so long that the chances of your voice being heard are that much reduced. The odds of you being heard are that much lowered. So which means, in other words, that you have a far better technology platform on which you, which you can leverage. But on the other hand, you need to f work far harder at it in order to make that happen. At least my personal view is that platforms will come and go. Today, Instagram happens to be the thing. Uh, you ask my son, he'll probably say, what's Instagram, Snapchat? is what I, I use. Uh, 
uh, on the other hand, uh, of course, uh, there, there will be the great LinkedIn uh, influencers who will say, listen, guys, all this stuff is frivolous. Uh, there was a time when Facebook had all the power, uh, right? Today, you have YouTube influencers who are uh, running into the millions. Uh, these platforms or technologies will come and go. They're before social media, there were those who had a lot of influence because of their columns. There were those who had influence because of the books they turned out. As you started out this session by saying that in my growing up years, I didn't really know what Irving Wallace or Ken Foley or Jeffrey Archer looked like. Uh, but over a p we, they still had a brand because you picked up the book based on that name that you saw on the cover. So. I, to say that simply because the face wasn't associated with it, it wasn't a brand, that's not true. So I think platforms, technologies will come and go. Uh, but as far as brands are concerned, they will, if, if, they are, if they are here to stay, they will evolve and adapt to those changing technologies and platforms. Tapan, where do you weigh in on this with uh, social media? Do you think that it's made it easier or it's made it more challenging? So if you look at it now, uh, if you're open, if you're transparent, and if you're open to taking feedback, tough feedbacks, it's easy for you. <coughs> if you're in a shell, if you have... Uh, like preconceived notions about yourself and you have a view which may be different from the view that other world has, it exposes you uh, very, very strong. You know? So it, it actually opens up to you as a person. So if, if you are very open and it's perfectly fine to have feedback, it's very fine to have criticism, social media is an amazing place because you get it all there. Like you can't be in an ivory castle and you know, only hear good things about yourself. There you hear everything, good, bad, ugly, you hear as it is some some may be no, uh, targeted, some may be open. So it depends on how you take it up. So for me personally, I, I find it very intriguing and I find it very interesting and I love to be there. Because I also take up issues. So it is not that I would try to build a particular brand or something. I write about spiritualism, I, I write about, let's say, once I felt that the MBA word is being used as a marketing tool to convince kids that you don't do MBA, they'll fail in life. I started a series called Street MBA very early on, no, in which I said uh, it is bullshit. It is like creating a caste system in education, no, that you want to succeed, you do an MBA. I try to beat that myth through, no, my um, shows and no, articles which I wrote there. <coughs> but those days it used to be 25 minute content, and that was doing fine. Over time, I realized when all the Instagram started coming in, that the content more than five minutes is getting too long for people. Then I started a series called Talk to Tapan, which is just a three minute or two minute content no, starts coming through. So fundamentally, pick up issues that you feel are relevant for society. And it has nothing to do with my company as such. No, I felt that it's a very strong thing, which is very relevant. And so many kids should not get no, left behind with this thinking or, or the way in or spiritualism in the corporate world, no, or does it exist and how should it be looked into. So then I started writing about that. So you have to pick up relevant topics, be open to different diverse views, be very humble about it, then it's an amazing place to be. When you start making ego of yourself and start positioning yourself as one place and you can't take criticism, then you have a tough time. Uh, but just to take up something that Ashwin uh, picked up on and like, you know, also what I'm going to talk to is about how now the platform has, because of its easy accessibility, has a lot of voices on it. And, you know, the, the long tail is, is really long. So where should you be on it? Should you be like an Elon Musk or a Trump where you're always saying something controversial and someone is like constantly picking up? So then whether you like it or not, that does pick up attention, that, uh, that catches eyeballs. Or do you take a lower, quieter position? What do you think is a better way to go? Your personality. Ask Trump to take a lower position, will he? <laughs> no. no. So it's your personality. So that's why I said... The era of trying to build a brand, that's why I'm trying to contradict the thought process that you have to build a brand. I'm trying to just put for you have to be yourself. Like you look at Mahatma Gandhi also, I don't think he thought of building a brand. He did what he felt was relevant as a messaging to his people for the freedom fight movement. No, He did that and that became a brand. So I think the way I'm trying to turn this on the head is Mr. Personality. Uh, uh, Mr. Trump cannot no, take a position which is on the silent side and 
somebody like an Elon Musk cannot do so. I think for them, if that doesn't happen, I don't think they, they would relish it. So they're perfectly fine with it and they go ahead with it. Now, if you don't have that personality and you take that position, in two days' time, you'll be in a societal thought, no? But it, it, is, it is a very difficult position to be there because the amount of backlash also you get is huge, no? And you have to have that kind of personality to handle that and do that. And there are some people who, who, who are soft and for them to take that position no, and think that that's how I'll build a brand and enter into that would be the very, very wrong step. So today's brand creation is not about what people tell you. It's about who you are and what you're comfortable with. Just be that. It itself is a very powerful brand. You, you yourself are a very powerful brand. Remember that irrespective of who you are. No? Right. So I think. Ambit, right. would, would you uh, agree with that? That the, the person, who you are and the personal brand are both the same or can they be different? I think these two cannot be dealing. You know, this is, you know, in my book I've talked about it because, you know, very often you say, huh, I want to build a personal brand and I start posting stuff on, on LinkedIn and I start doing some random stuff. That's not going to work, right? First, you have to discover what you are and what people say about you. Is it correct? Do you want to change it, right? So start with what you are. And then once you've figured out what you are, then you can do things to build that brand. That could be, for example, not doing anything on social media, right? Uh, and I have dedicated a whole chapter on networking, which I want to talk a bit on. Because networking normally you think is, uh, you know, going and distributing visiting cards. It's not. Networking is deeper level engagement in another activity where you get to meet a whole new set of people, right? So networking is a part of building a personal brand. Uh, your executive presence is a part of your personal brand. Executive communication part of your personal brand. How you write your memo is a part of your personal brand. I remember we had a wonderful film manager in Bombay and a wonderful branch manager in, uh, in, in Chennai, Minita and Anu. And they used to have these huge slanging matches on, on email. And many of them were all caps. You know, in email, when you write all caps, it's equal to shouting. And, and you know, because if some kids are here, I'm just telling them, never use all caps, right? And I said, look, you two are actually nice people. What is wrong with you? So I said, Minita, come to Bombay and you know, Anu, come here, sit down, you guys sort it out. And they talked and half an hour later, everything was sorted out. Right? So the way you write, the way you talk, everything goes about building your personal brand. Once you've done that, once you've got that clarity, this is what I want to stand for broadly. And this is how I project myself. right? And then you say, okay, I want to amplify it. Social media can help you amplify it, whether it is through Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. So it's just the topping. What is, and I agree with what happened there, what is at the core is what you are. What do you stand for? Don't try to be someone else. You know, I mean, I, I appreciate uh, uh, Harsh Goenka. He's a big leader. But, you know, on Twitter, he's taken on the role of a very funny tweeter. Very funny. His tweets are really great fun. Right? And he's a, he's a industrialist worth several hundred th thousand crores or something, but and once I remember telling him, you know, it's very funny, uh, your tweets. He said, yeah, actually someone has put together a book of my funny tweets. And I, and I found it on the net, right? So that's him. You know, he's having fun. So he's using Twitter to create an entirely different uh, different dimension. Right? Anand Mahindra, very different. Always about India, about Mahindra, this product, Mahindra, that product. At one time, if you had a problem with any of your Mahindra vehicle, the way to get instant attention was to tweet and tag Anand Mahindra to it, right? You got quick service. So each to his own, but start with the core. Start with the core material. What are you? What are you good at? What do people say about you? And then decide how do you want to project it in whichever way you want, whether to go and give talks or to go and participate in competitions or to come for LitFest or, or write books or write columns, or be on LinkedIn, or whatever. Right? It starts with the core. Mahatma Gandhi, when he came back, he said, I want to fight for the freedom of the country. And the important thing is, I want to be identified as one of the common man. I don't want to be seen as a barrister returning from London wearing his three-piece suit. Started from there. I want to be genuine. I want to be truthful. And, and then he went about you know, doing his job, and the brand got built. You know, automatically the brand got built. But he he used all the right levers even before we in marketing had figured out what those what are those levers. Today we talk of 
paid owned and earned media those of you in marketing know that paid owned and earned media mahatma gandhi created own media then right he published his own magazine his own books but there are apparently something like some 60 or 80 volumes of his writing uh, you know which are archived which is amazing amount you know and, and he fought for the freedom of the country and he kept writing god knows how he wrote all that but what tapan says right who are you define your core what do you want to stand for and then think about building your personal brand don't do it the other way around fair enough well i think we can still go on talking but we should kind of draw the audience in uh, for some questions so uh, if you have any questions do we have mics in the we have no mics okay so then one of these mics um if you can keep your question short and you can just tell us who the question is addressed to okay my question is to anyone okay to everyone uh, yes okay so what would you do if you are nobody and you want to build a brand what are the steps you will take okay ambi can we start with you on that one first of all you're not a nobody there is Very no one there that. is no one in this room who's a nobody everyone is a somebody minimum you are someone's son someone's brother right start from there so you're a, there no one like a nobody everyone is a somebody and that somebody has some qualities which people see are good which could be friendly helping whatever it is whatever it may be there are some qualities in you start from there brand apne aap build ho jayega and then later you may want to be do a few things in social media that's up to you but there is no one who is a nobody that's my short answer fabulous sandeep that's very perfect tapan please go ahead so i just ask you one question what do you really love the most no bahut aapko kya cheez bahut achhi lagti hai what are you very passionate about no what is something that no you will give your life for start from there no talk about it write about it say he writes about uh, food he writes about wine i am very sure very passionate about it no ashwin writes about mystery about mythology mess is very passionate he writes about brand so if you look at all all the three who are so successful here they are writing and doing things which they love to do so start from there jo bhi jo bahut hi pasand hai which you just just write about it speak about it no and don't worry about who reads what people say just don't worry you just be naturally and let it be out there and you start slowly seeing that as you enjoy the process it will build up for you if you start targeting that i want to be a brand and start from you know here then it will not happen just start from this just simple baby step like this and i'm sure one day you will be a big brand ashwin so i would only say one thing that i have always believed and i agree 100% with what tapan just said that if you are lucky in your life then you get to do what you love if you are a little luckier then you get to do what you love and you are also good at it and if you are really lucky then you get to do what you love you are also good at it and someone's willing to pay you for it so my advice would be work in stages so that you can get to that and you'll realize that the brand has happened along the way uh could you go to the gentleman in the mic back please the same no the same sorry just the, the same to ask a question mr nobody <laughs> hi so actually uh, what's your name sir aniket sir aniket you have got three wonderful answers and three very very honest and very very uh, helpful answers i hope that kind of really puts you in the right direction for your uh, to create your own brand yes but yeah. i want to rephrase the question no no now your one question is over now it goes to the next person time out <laughs> good afternoon sir uh, actually my question is for all four of you uh, what is the difference between uh, 
corporate brand and personal brand and what do you exactly mean of personal brand? Okay, um, I think we spent 45 minutes on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I think Ambi, I'm gonna let you just wrap it up uh, quickly. Okay, uh, introduce yourself. You're a student, where are you? What, what are you? Uh, I'm a student. Which class? Ninth grade. Ninth grade, okay. So I pardon you for asking this question because if you're an MBA and you ask this question, I would have sent you back to your business school <laughs> to spend two additional years to figure out what is a corporate brand and what is a personal brand. Simplest answer, Tata Group is a corporate brand. Mr. Ratan Tata is a personal brand. Mr. Chandrasekharan is a personal brand. He has his own big difference, right? Tata is a big group. Chandra is uh, CEO of Tata Sons. But there is something interesting about Chandra. What is it? He runs a marathon. He has run eight marathons all over the world. Right? That's, that's a distinct thing, thing about his personal brand. So corporate brand, Mahindra Group, Anand Mahindra, personal brand. RPG Group, corporate brand, which owns brands like Seat and KEC, personal brand, Harsh Goenka. So it's simple. Once you, I mean, you're still young, you will, you pick. and then of course, I don't want to confuse you. There is corporate brand, there is product brand. Right, product brands are, you know, Lux and Santur and Sundrop are product brands. There are service brands. Service brands are Amazon. You heard of Amazon, right? It's a service brand. Airtel, it's a service brand. Then there are personal brands. I told you some names. Yes. Then there are what are called charity brands, right? Which is like World Wildlife, right? Uh, Greenpeace, they are charity brands. So there are multiple brands. You go, you're still young, you will learn. By the time you grow up, there may be another hundred types of brands. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Anyone else has a question? Okay, in front over here. Uh, good afternoon. Arshil can't, you can't ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Arshil is senior executive of Crossword Bookstores. He's read all our books, he's read all our tweets, he's read all our stuff. Thank you. So uh, the question is, uh, what if uh, these? Who is the question for? Okay, Ambi, maybe. And uh, if anyone, like you know, if Tapan sir also would like to add. Uh, so what if if the immediate boss uh, uh, doesn't want you to be, uh, like you know, uh, get your personal brand, like sort of mushroom in or, so how do you? Uh, maybe in terms of corporate, if Ambi and Tapan sir could answer that. So how do you? Yeah, I, Tapan, wa Tapan wants to, I've been speaking too much. So okay. I'll speak out my personal experiences. That would be helpful. Yes. No, I mentioned that early when I started writing, you know, and picking it up and, and I was, had strong views. So people um, senior to me, board members, made this comment which I mentioned that, you know, you spend too much time on social media. I mentioned that you spend too little. So one is the belief that you have, you know, that should uh, be there. Second, I've always stood for um, individual freedom, but <coughs> not at the conflict of society, you know, but um, real freedom. And I have never allowed anybody to try to stifle it. It doesn't matter, you know. At the most, I may have to look for another job, which is good enough. I don't have to worry about that. And same, I have pushed my team also. And that's why I remember early on I said that, no, I don't try to put any straight jacketing in terms of how it is. <coughs> there are people who are aligned to the organization, there are people not be aligned, but they are individually very good in what they are. And there are organizations to which they may be aligned. That's a different thing altogether. So never be uh, pushed back, you know, in terms of, um, and I'll give you another example, is my, my daughter, which is actually interesting. She's a doctor, she's a gynecologist. If you look at one of the early reels, or doctors which became very popular, it was her, Nirashma Singhal, it <coughs> went into millions of views in the COVID time, you know. Then her professors pushed back, saying you're a doctor and you can't do Insta reels, you know. And she asked me, I did say that please continue, but she stopped, you know. So there are two, two different personalities. If I speak about myself, when I was told, I did not. I believe that what I believe in, I will be who I am. Same time, my own daughter, who actually at a very short notice became a huge influencer on Insta, but she stopped when she got a pushback, saying that as a doctor, you can't be seen as a, as a frivolous, 
no, putting real stuff on it. So now it's become very popular. Every doctor is there on that. But early on, I think she was the early forefront of no getting it on. Now, who is right or wrong? I do not know. It's it's your choice. But if you ask me personally, my belief is do what you feel is right and don't worry about who and what is in today's world. Uh, it it is what should be. Don't get pushed back by anything. No. Well, I think the lady in green is making eyes at me. So it means quite clearly that we have run out of time and uh, one more so question no no i think uh, we've run do we have time for one more oh, you come no, back we don't really. we can take it offline outside yeah. fair enough absolutely uh ambi tapan ashwin thank you so much i think this was a really fun and very in engaging uh, conversation so i hope all of you guys enjoyed it as well thank you what an informative session we got some effective tips today on self branding and what i took up from what ambi was saying service to society brand pune international literary festival personal brand dr manjuri prabhu thank you mr ambi parmeshwaran mr ashwin sanghi mr tapan singhel and mr antuan lewis for this uh, exciting and informative session and thank you for being our pilf guests Uh, we thank our title sponsors vishwakarma publications silver partner state bank of india bronze partner bajaj alliance bookstore partner crossword after a 10 minute break we will begin our next session the curious case of destination thrillers so look forward to seeing uh, dr manjuri prabhu and kulpreet yadav so i see you in 10 minutes